Moving forward, and this session is going to look at how do we accelerate the network data transmission for uh, several different techniques and use cases. The first talk is from Jeffrey Fong. He did his graduate work, his master's work at uh, Tsinghua University, and this is part of his master's work. He's now working in the U.S. Um, so he will describe an FPGA-based solution for network acceleration. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, but all right. Um, so my presentation today will be on Parasplit. It's a scalable architecture on FPGA for a terabit packet classification. Um, so here's my outline um, for today. First, I'm going to talk about um, background and motivation. So what is the packet classification problem? Then I'll talk about my proposed um, solution in this paper, which is called Parasplit. There's three parts to it. There's a range point conversion set partitioning, um, simulated annealing, and the hardware design implementation. Um, after that, I'll have some performance evaluation. And at the end, there's going to be a conclusion. Um, so first up is uh, background and motivation. So what is the packet classification problem? Um, essentially, packet classification is to identify and associate each packet to a specific rule. Um, so if we look here in this diagram here, in the middle is, it's like a firewall or um, a router. So packet is coming in from the left, and um, what happens is that in this packet there's a header and there's a payload, and packet header may include the source address, destination address, sor source port, destination port, and then you will, like, naturally, I guess, routers should have like a set, a rule set where if it matches certain rules, it would determine what action to do to certain packets coming in. For example, deny it or just pass it through. And uh, one more thing is each packet coming in can, may match multiple rules in a rule set. And obviously, packet classification is used for, as I said, routing, firewall, intrusion detection system, and even quality of service. Um, really, it works. So what, what are the common techniques used and nowadays, there's, I, I generally divide it into two groups. One is uh, SRAM-based, and the other is TCAM-based. SRAM-based are essentially just software running on general hardware, so like multi-core servers. Um, so different algorithms give different search speed and supports different number of rules. On the other hand, um, TCAMs are essentially dedicated packet matching hardware, and you know different hardware arch architecture or you know, design, have different speed. And the advantage of SRAM base or multi-core base is um, the price because it's general hardware. So it's generally cheap. And because it's cheap, you can buy lots of hardware. So it supports generally a larger number of rules. However, the disadvantage is that it's kind of, um, it's not very fast. On the other hand, TCAM, it's really fast because it's dedicated hardware. But the disadvantage is that it's expensive and it consumes lots of energy. So what are the challenges and goals? There are essentially two challenges. One is the increasing bandwidth. And you know, also, the second one is uh, the rule sets are becoming increasingly large and complex. And what's causing this increase in bandwidth? It's you know increasing number of applications that needs high bandwidth, like video IP, video conferencing, um, video streaming, data center, software-defined networks. And so um, you know, my goal here is to you know, achieve high throughput and with deterministic performance. And the rule sets, as I mentioned, are becoming large and complex. And what it means is that you know, complex rules have multiple header fields that you're now searching for. Before, you're probably looking at just the destination address or maybe just the um, source address. But now, they want to look at all the ports and like maybe timestamps and everything. For example, OpenFlow looks at 11 tuples, 12 tuples. Um, so it's multidimensional. Um, and then even state-of-the-art algorithm nowadays require a few to hundreds of gigabytes to just build this data structure for um, classifying packets. So my second goal is to have low memory consumption. OK, so now I'm going to move on to the, the proposed method called pair, pair split. Um, pair split is an optimized software hardware kind of solution. Um, it consists of um, a, a rule set compiler. So you, you would feed um, your rule set into the, 
compiler and it would compile it into an optimized data structure, which is loaded onto the packet classification engine, which is implemented on an FPGA. The FPGA does the packet classification, obviously, so the packet header goes into the FPGA and it will tell you what rule it match or what action to do. Before I go into the proposed um, algorithm um, or the method, I want to talk about where I get this motivation, the algorithmic motivation for this. So as everyone knows, um, I guess, the worst case decision tree spatial complexity, meaning the memory usage of for um, a decision tree is n to the power of d, n being the number of rules, d being the dimension, so the number of header fields that you're looking at. But in reality, this really depends on the intrinsic property of the rule set. So here, if you look at the table, I have three different rule sets with approximately the same number of rules. Um, the ACL, which is the access um, control list, um, IPC stands for IP chain, and for FW for firewall, and they approximately have 10K rules. But you can see that on the right-hand side that the memory consumption differs by almost a thousand times from ACL to firewall. And really, this difference in memory consumption is caused by what I call overlapping or conflicting rules in the rule set, which causes rules to replicate in the decision tree. So here's an example of what, I'm, what I mean by um, overlapping rule causing replication. Here is very simple. There, there is a rule set with three rules. And it has two dimensions, so two header fields, for, for example. And if you were to convert this rule set into a geometrical view, you would see this, you know, this diagram that I have here, this figure that I have here. And if you were to build a decision tree based on this, you would end up with this kind of looking decision tree. And the highlighted yellow part is um, the tree that got replicated because of these overlapping of the rules. And there's really no, no good way of kind of removing it. Um, so here, um, is it really possible to you know, somehow remove these conflicting rules? Well, yes, it turns out that it's possible to reduce memory consumption by you know, considerably by just removing certain rules. So the idea is to divide the original rule set into m groups or subsets. And each group con contains non-conflicting rules such that the union of the subset is the original rule set. And then you would build a decision tree based on each groups. And when you're doing a lookup, you would traverse all trees. And then at the end, just combine the results together by selecting the high, highest um, priority rule. However, how do we actually find this good groups or subset that's not conflicting? Well, this is what I'm addressing in this kind of paper. It's called Perispit. There's so I would first apply something that I call range point conversion to generate good initial grouping. And then I, I apply simulated annealing, annealing to um, approximate a global minima. And then we, we deal with um, multiple tree traversal by taking advantage of the abundant resources and parallelism available on the FPGA. And just um, one note, it's uh, you know finding this good groups, you can't really brute force it because it's really hard. It's, it's kind of like um, analogous to the combinatory mathematics where you have like 100 balls, six hats, how many different ways you can you know, put these 100 balls. And for example, if we have 100 rules, six groups, there's more than nine, to the nine times 10 to the power of 74 different ways to group these. So we would need like a easier or better method for finding a good grouping. Um, so first, I'm going to talk about this range point conversion. Well, rules are kind of hard to group because in um, a rule with, with f header fields or um, f dimensional, they're kind of like objects or hyper, hyper rectangles in, in f dimensional space. And there's really no good algorithm of grouping different sizes of rules or like rectangles. So range point conversion is essentially you would convert it into points in two f dimensional space by treating the starting and ending point of a rule as separate dimensions. And then you would just end up with a point. And then you can use traditional grouping, point grouping algorithms to group these. So here's an example. 
um, example um, with two one-dimensional rules. Um, here you see the, the rule one has a starting point of two, ending point of three. Um, rule two has a starting point of one, ending point of six. And if you were to draw the traditional method of um, what this rule looked like in the one-dimensional space, it looks like these lines here on the bottom, uh, bottom left. However, when I convert it into um, this range point conversion, you see that they become a point um, right here. So this is rule one and rule two. And just to make sure that everything is sane and everything works, I have some test packets. So packet A is three right here. So it matches rule one and rule two. And mathematically speaking, this packet here, if you draw these lines here, everything within this area um, are, the, are the rules that it matches. So again, packet A should match rule one and rule two. And here it is, you can see that it is contained within this rectangle. And packet B is matched by rule, um, rule two, as expected. Um, after, after the initial partitioning using range point conversion, oh, sorry, one, one more thing I forgot to mention is that um, there are a few heuristics that you could use after you convert it to points to, um, to use to group them. So for example, what, like how you want to group them, like minimum distance or like maximum distance or whatnot. Um, I discussed it in my paper, but you know, I'm not going to you know, spend too much time on that here for the presentation. Um, so after I, I have these initial grouping, I apply simulated annealing to approximate the global minima. So the goal is to further reduce memory usage, which means that my cost function is the memory consumption. So how it works is essentially just randomly select the two subsets, um, subset SI and SJ, and then perform one of three possible actions. So essentially what it's trying to do is just trying to either move a rule from one group to another or swap um, a rule from two groups. Um, and then after you perform one of these actions, you would accept the new state with, the, with a probability of e to the power of negative delta t over t. And what it essentially means is that um, this temperature of the system, it, it, it lowers over time. So essentially what it means is that in the beginning, it, you will accept um, bad, um, bad choices, essentially. And why would you want, actually want to re accept bad choices is to actually remove yourself or try to get out of local optima and try to get to a global optima. So that's why you would kind of accept bad states in the beginning. Um, so after you build, you, you have this grouping. I apply hypersplit um, to build the decision tree for each group. And I do the hardware mapping by you know, grouping nodes within the same level um, into one stage, like so. So here's the decision tree, and I draw the rectangles. That's how I group nodes together. Um, and then, because this actually maps quite well into hardware, it, it actually ends up being a pipeline, because each stage does a very simple thing. It takes the information from the previous stage, which is generally just a pointer, and it does a comparison. And uh, so, for example, here, the, the input packet coming in at the top, it does a very simple comparison with one dimension, here being x. And then depending on whether it, it is greater than this certain value, it would, it would give a pointer to the left side or the right side, and so on. And at the end, you, sh you would end up with the match rule. Um, so as I mentioned before that, I partition the rule set, the original rule set, into many different subsets. So you would actually have to traverse all the different subsets as well to find the rule. So this is the actual, the full implementation in hardware on how you would do it. So for each um, subset, you would build a decision tree, and you would you would have a separate pipeline for it. Um, and when you do, when you try to match a packet, you the packet would go through every decision tree, and at the end of it, it has to aggregate, or it has to find the best matching rule by finding the highest priority rule out of all the, all the results from all, the, all your decision tree. Um, 
And uh, we utilize dual port VRAM for, to double the performance for extra memory usage. And because memory usage is significantly reduced, we can put multiple engines on a single FPGA to, for even higher throughput. OK, so performance evaluation. Um, the test bed, I tested it with a publicly available rule set from Washington University, mainly the IPC, the IP chain, and the firewall 100 rules, 1K rule, 5K rule, and 10K rule sets. And we also generated FP, uh, open flow like 11 tuple rule set, um, which is generated based on 216 real life 11 tuple rules from enterprise customers. And the design is implemented on a Silence Vertex 5 FPGA. So first, pair split versus well-known algorithms such as hypersplit, um, high cuts one, and high cuts eight. High cuts eight meaning that their leaf nodes has eight rules, so you would have to do like a linear search at the end. Um, and then also um, HSM. And here we see that memory consumption is um, reduced by an average of 150 times. And what this means is actually rule sets that used to consume one gigabyte in, of memory can now fit within two megabytes of VRAM within the FPGA. Um, here is pair split versus another um, um, partitioning algorithm, which is called Efficuts. It's the state of the art right now. It's the best. Um, and pair split shows that it requires 20% to 50%. 500% less memory than Efficut scheme. Um, and this is um, the results for OpenFlow-like complex rules. And here I'm comparing it um, with Hypersplit. Um, so for a different number of rules, we can see that um, Parasplit uses three orders of mag magnitude le less memory than Hypersplit, and the worst case tree height is also reduced by at least 30%. And here are the hardware performance. So obviously, less rules. The hardware is smaller. You can, you can achieve higher clock rate. And these are the maximum throughput based on this clock rate. And because the memory usage is the bottleneck in our design, so we can calculate how many, essentially based on how much um, VRAM that we're using for each rule set, we can calculate how many engines we could put on. For, for example, um, a Vertex 7, and nowadays it has lots of VRAM. So for example, the firewall 100, we can, we can put up to 60 engines in it, and that would aggregate up to 7.38 terabytes per second. But for 10K, it's near terabit per second. OK, finally, um, my conclusion. Um, Parasplit is an optimized software hardware combined solution with the following contribution. So a set partitioning algorithm that achieves 100 times memory reduction compared to algorithms with well rule set partitioning. Um, a pipeline decision tree um, to hardware mapping with parallel pipeline and engine that can provide over 100 gigabyte per second sustained throughput per engine. and um, Sorry, Gary, a bit per second. <laughs> um, and uh, due to low memory consumption, multiple engines can be used to provide up to terabit per second. Um, and future works co um, contain um, heterogeneous engine to support various algorithms. So right now, I'm just supporting only one, which is decision tree. But um, you, know, you could also try, you can also have multiple algorithms, because certain certain rule sets or certain parts of your um, different subsets of your rule may suit different algorithms. So um, in the future, you may want to have multiple different algorithms implemented in hardware and separate your rule set such that um, each subset is suitable for one particular algorithm. Um, and then also better set partitioning heuristics. OK, thank you, for everyone. I think my presentation was a bit short, but that's it. <laughs> First thing I'm <laughs>